ever felt like there's ever any kind of spotlight. It's just our team. Um, and we show up and we go to work every day and it's just, that's just how it is. When you're at practice for the last couple of weeks and you're hearing the construction noises and seeing the, you know, the other grandstands being put up, how, like, what does that make you feel when you know that in, just a few weeks, you'll be back here, and even more people will be having a chance to watch Chris play. Um, I think it makes us excited because it just shows how our game is growing, and it's an awesome feeling to just know that the people of Nebraska are excited to come and watch softball. Um, so I think we're all just thankful to be a part of this time where our sport is growing so much, um, and we're all working really hard to try to make it a fun show to watch. So um, just. We're going to be really excited when we get to come and play here in March. Jordy, Coach was at her request to put this question to you. Just fitting in, and um, the, you know, she mentioned it feels like with a lot of the older veterans that you've been here forever and it's not your first time here. So how easy or how difficult was that to kind of work yourself in and some of these players that you grew up playing with and just being in a new environment? Yeah, definitely having a lot of those um, friendships from when I was younger helped a lot. But these girls, like, this is one of the nicest teams I've ever been on. Like, all of these girls are just so welcoming. Um, no one had their guards up, anything like that. Everyone is just who they are every day. And when everyone's just who they are, it's really easy to get to know each other, and it's easy for you to be yourself. So uh, there's just a lot of trust within this team, and there has been since day one, so that's made it really easy. Jordy, I know you don't like to refer to it as the spotlight, but... Candidly speaking, how much more, more so on campus, are you recognized maybe than, than in Norman? Oh, never. I'm not on campus a lot, so. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I go to the training table, go to classes, um, just another student, and it's awesome, so it's cool. What do you, what do you think about the potential that this year's team has in, in terms of your goals, making it all the way to the postseason? Wait, sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, what do you think about the potential that this, oh. this team has in terms of making it all the way to the postseason? Um, we have all the tools, and that's so exciting. Um, and our goal is to be the last team standing. And so I think Coach touched on it very well. It's like it's easy to look at the end goal, and everybody knows what that end goal is, and that's why we play because we want to compete, we want to win. But we're taking it one day at a time, really. We know we have all the tools, but in order for that to happen, we have to be ourselves every day, and we can't buy into anything past what we're doing in the present moment, whether it be a practice. We can't even be looking towards tomorrow's practice. we got to be focused on our practice at hand today. Um, so that's kind of how we're going to roll through season. Um, it's going to be Thursday before it's Friday and Friday before it's Saturday and this first weekend before it's the next weekend. So I think when you look at it like that, too, it's, it simplifies everything. The simpler, the better. Less is more. So it's good. Jordy, how do you look at the big picture just with your decision to ultimately come back here to now finally being five days away from putting on the Nebraska uniform and getting to play for real? It's crazy because I feel like I've been here a really long time, but when I look back like a year ago today, like we were just about to start season. So, I mean, it's just crazy when you think about it and like that. But, I mean, yeah, it feels like we've been on campus working for a really long time now because it started right when the summer hit. So it's just cool because this season's been anticipated and um, we're just all excited for it to start, and now it's here. What have you been on some successful teams the past few seasons? Just kind of... What are maybe the intangibles you're bringing from Oklahoma to see success in this year's team? Honestly, um, all the credit goes to our senior class and our super seniors. Because Coach said um, a while back, like, they were struggling with some things. But the, our senior class and our super seniors have really, like, built the culture of this program from the ground up. So when people talk about, like, the excitement around this team and everything, I give the credit to them um, and how they've worked and taken initiative over – just the culture and wanting people to want to be here. Um, and they've done a really good job of that. Um, and so I think that's something, like, you don't take from one program to the next. That is something that they have taken since day one as freshmen and worked for. So um, really, I don't know if anything's really being taken, um, but just this team is special. Since you transferred back, you've been really big on, on growing the sport in the, in the state of Nebraska. And if we look ahead to game one, um, there's a chance that it could be you and Ruby. So what does that say about the talent that's from Nebraska? And if you you faced your last mm -hmm. year, so um, just what does that say about softball here? It's exciting. It just shows girls here that 
you know, like the Midwest isn't huge when it comes to softball hype and all that kind of stuff. But it just shows you that that doesn't really matter. You don't have to be from a certain place or a certain state or a certain hot spot um, to be able to play ball at the highest level. Um, I love Ruby. She's a great competitor. She works hard. Um, she just matures every single year to turn into this competitive woman who's inspiring younger girls. Um, and so I'm just super happy for her because um, she's worked really hard to get where she is. And it's really exciting for young girls all over the state to see. And what does the 5% on there? 5%. So something that we've talked about as a team. Uh, so my dad's a firefighter, and it's kind of an analogy with the fire service. So um, like we say only like 5% of the firemen's calls are like the worst of the worst that you could think of. Um, but they train for that 5% so that when it happens, they're ready for it. And so on our team, we're saying we're training for the 5%. We're training for the most high-pressure moments in our game that might happen only so often, but when they come, we're going to be ready for it, and we're not going to be timid or held back at all. We're going to be drooling at the opportunity. Um, so just ready for that small percent. How much are you looking forward to really being a bat in this lineup, and did it take some getting used to again to, to you know, swing away again? Well, I mean, like, even the last two years, like, I hit in practice and everything. So I'm just still taking the mindset that whatever coach asked me to do, I want to be ready to do and help our team in whatever way possible. So that mindset, I mean, I'm just excited to get to compete in whatever part of the game it may be. Kind of a random question. Uh, we're doing a story on Bryson. I mean, how, how happy are you that you get to come home and, and see him play in his games and – I assume there's no ill will that he's a Titan and you were a Monarch. No, none at all. Um, it's been a really fun just fall and winter. Um, I would just hear a lot of the times the last two years about how well he's doing. Um, I'd watch games when I could on the live stream. But just being able to be in person and see him do what he loves and he's so good at and he works really hard for, uh, it's been just a special, special fall and winter. Um, and I'm really not taking any of it for granted um, just because having missed it for so long. But I love all my brothers. Um, and even the last two years when I got to make it back for a football game for my brother Broden, like that was always just a highlight of the year. So I've had a lot of highlights of the years this fall and winter so um, I'm just excited for him he's worked really hard so Jordy where have you seen the biggest growth in your game this offseason what have you tried to work on and then how have you seen that develop um I think in working with coach Sipple a big piece is just continuing to grow in like the headspace um once you get to a certain point, like especially like for college athletes, that mind game is one of the hardest parts to manage and hardest parts to be in control of. Um, and if you're not in control of yourself mentally, you're not going to be able to have any control over your performance. So um, the mind is weird and it's hard to manage at times and it's hard to understand. But just continuing to work on how to grow in that part of the game has been huge. And Coach Sipple has a ton of wisdom. She's very wise. She's played this game herself. She, she's dealt with all of the same things that we're dealing with, especially as pitchers. So I've been leaning on her a lot in that space.